Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the Bible study tonight again. We thank you because you have not left us in darkness. Those who do not know you, who do not know your word, who do not know your requirements are in darkness. They don't know where they are. They don't know the direction they are going. They don't know the dangers around them. They do not know the way unto the light and the eternal bliss and happiness and joy with God. But you have given us a privilege of having the light shine across our pathway. And we thank you because of the light of the word of God which you shed abroad in our hearts on our path every time as we come in here to study. Father, we are depending upon the Holy Spirit tonight that He will enlighten us. He will illuminate us. He will make us to know the truth as it is in Christ in Jesus' name. By your word and your spirit, we pray you lead us on. Until we will see you face to face in glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tonight we're still on a study of the Epistle of Paul to the Colossians. Already eight studies in the Epistle are taking us through chapter 1. Verses 1 through to 29. Now we're going to chapter 2. And we're looking at something very essential and important today in the ministry of Paul the Apostle which is a challenge to us to also have it in our ministry as well. If you look at chapter 2 verse 1, you will understand why the title of the study tonight is Ministry to Far Away Saints. Look at Colossians chapter 2 verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Paul the Apostle had a ministry to the saints at Colossae, to the saints at Laodicea, and to the saints that had not even seen a face in the flesh. He still had a ministry to these saints that were out of sight and far away people. If you have been following through on the studies we have been having, you know that false teachers had come to Colossae, laboring to confuse the Colossian brethren and to destroy their faith. And even though Paul had never been to Colossae, and he was not responsible for planting the church in that city, yet he was concerned for them. He could not immediately go to them because he was in the prison at Rome. And yet these Colossians needed such ministry, such ministration, greater than what Epaphras, the resident pastor, 
could offer to them. Epaphras knew the problems that the Christians at Colossae are. Epaphras And he was the one that reported the situation to Paul the apostle. Look at Colossians chapter 1 from verse 7. As ye also learnt of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. Who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. Not only that, a Epaphras was a fervent minister, a fervent preacher, and a very faithful, prayerful minister of God. Look at Colossians chapter 4 verse 12. Colossians chapter 4 who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God, for I bear him record, that he has a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them in Herapolis. Epaphra, anything say or can you know you in a circle, can you own P. Iwaya, Jagbadura, Niba, go go for you, here you kill the Duroniki, at the Niki, you know, go go if you're alone. Nitori mo jeri repi, oni itara kuko funyi, ati fun awanti o wani lao dekia, ati awanti o wani era poli. Epaphras was a faithful minister. Epaphras je iransi o lo to. Fervent in spirit. Ogbo ni gbo lo kan. Wanting to be of benefit to the people at Laodicea and Colossae. O fe je iransi o lo to. Awanti o wani lao dekia ati e Colossae. He was a dependable minister of God. O je iransi o lo to se ek beke li. And yet he knew that there were problems and there were areas of ministry that the Colossian brethren needed which he could not fully, completely minister unto them, he went to Paul the Apostle to report the case. And Paul the Apostle now, when he was at Rome, he sent this epistle to the people at Colossae, ministry to the faraway saints, to the out of sight saints. Nigba ti, epa pra, ti o ti ma wala, a ti ru la, si go ti a wan, i jo Colossae ni, ti o ti ma kwe, o un ko le, kakpa wala, ti soro na, o to pon lu lo, o ti ti yi, to pon le ti, if you look at the latter part, at the very last part of the epistle, after the last verse of the last chapter, you will see written in small, small letters, written from Rome to the Colossians by Tychicus and Onesimus. That is, Paul the Apostle wrote this epistle, and he put the epistle in the hands of Tychicus and Onesimus. And he said, I cannot travel there now. I cannot go there now. I am separated by distance from them. Here am I in Rome. Here there they are at Colossae. Go and give this epistle to them to build them up. <laughs> Lost here and Wara Colossi, that's your war, Tikiku, at the only smooth. A late open hour, we pay Paul Apostle in Yakoko, you could laugh for me, that you're in your do, that you love by way, you're not in Colossi, or one in Romo, or since your war, what Tikiku at your only smooth, that you feel where you saw what you want. It is very similar to what is happening in our midst right now. Oh, Father John, I don't sell a lane, you want to say that even though I am not with you in the physical. We are separated by distance, and yet that we are separated by distance doesn't mean that I cannot exercise an effective ministry towards you, even though you are out of my sight, and even though you are far away, so to say. Nitorina biyoti leje kwe ni akoko yi, unko le si la ali yi, kyo da biya ni kwe onajijin, okwe wani ya ba yi, subwa ele ipe onajijin, okwe wani ya, 
ko di mi lowo lati ma si oju se mi ati se ran se mi lati le mu yin dagba ninu olorun bi o ti le je pe n ko foju rin yin we we'll talk more about that later but to see paul the apostle had earlier shown the features of the ministry of god appointed minister saju eleyi wa ti mo to ma so nipa eleyi si sugbon saju bo fe so fun eri pe paul apostle yi gege bi a se ko o ti so nipa o ti o wa ni mi se ran se ni ti olorun yan now he demonstrates the primary requisite for the ministry. Mr. C, you are fi o ti o ge won akoko ninu ise ran se na o fi han bayi. And we need a lot to learn as ministers of God and of the gospel from Paul the apostle. As in your pupo lati ko gege bi ran se Olorun lati odo Paul apostle. He had experience with God. O ni riri pelu Olorun. So must we have experience with God if we are going to be real appointed ministers of God. Ba kan na ni awa na gbodo ni ba se ko ti o dara pelu Olorun ti a ba fe je apostle Olorun ti Olorun yan. Yeah spiritual knowledge only mati emi knowledge of god knowledge of christ knowledge of the gospel in fact it sums everything up to the mystery of the kingdom of god he had the knowledge spiritual knowledge by which he could serve and minister to the people of god only mo olorun only mo christi only mo ni pa irere o ti e ko gbogbo rejo o pe ni awon ejile o ni awon emo ejile won yi lati le fi sin awon eni olorun he had revelation of truth which is essential to salvation only fi han ti o ti so ele ti o ti se patapata pataki ni pa ti igbala some people have knowledge but the knowledge they have is not essential to salvation it's not leading us to eternal life but Paul the apostle had revelation of truth which is essential to salvation and when lo miran won ni mo sugbon e ma won ko ni se pelu igbala awon e ma ti ko ni se pelu ti o dari eniyan si ni igbala ni won ni sugbon ni ha ti Paul apostle o ni bi han ti o ti to ele ti o se pataki ni pa ti igbala he had leadership ability o ni pa gege bi adari he had preaching power o ni ipa lati wa su he had boldness o ni igboya he had faith o ni igbagbo he had the gifts of the spirit o ni awon e bo ti emi and some people depend only on these things or a combination of some of them awon lo miran awon si je kele awon kan ninu kan won yi abi awon apapo kan won yi but beyond all these qualities in the life of Paul he also had and demonstrated Christ like love for the church lo la bo lo lu bori gbogbo re ni pe bi Paul apostle se ni nkan won yi o fun ni ife ti o jo ti Christi and the reason he loved the church so much is because he loved the Lord so much on ti o fa ti o si fe ran ejo lopopolopo ni wi pe o fe ran oluwa lopopolopo this christ like sacrificial love is the one thing a minister must have above all the other qualities of his life if he be able to truly serve the people of god iru ife bi ti christi yi ife ipare ni rubo yi o ni o ko se mani ti o gbodo wa ninu aye ran si olorun ti o ba fe wulo lati je on ko fun iran awon agbo olorun and in today's study we're going to see how this love was manifested in caring for the people of god manifesting a caring ministry towards the colossians and others ninu eko ti oni la ori bi o ti si ife ati ibikita nipa awon eni aye han nipa ife ran se re si awon ejo kolose there are four points we want to look at o meri ni afe gbe yewo number 1 ekini love for out of sight sake ife fun awon eni ami ma ti a ko fojuri number 2 ekeji comfort for troubled heart itunu fu awon kan ti o ni damu number 3 iketa brotherly love within a united church ife ara ninu ijo ti o so kan number 4 ikeri assurance through spiritual knowledge idani loju nipa iman ti e number 1 ikini love for out of sight sake ife fu awon eyan mi ma ti a ko fojuri colossians chapter 2 Verse one. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have toward for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Nitori e mi fe ki e yin ti o ma bi wa ya ja ti mo ni fun yin ti kotu ati fun awon ara Laodicea ati fun iye awon ti ko e ti ri oju mi ni pa ti ara. Verse five. Essay karu. For though I I be absent in the flesh. Yet am I with you in the spirit joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ Nitori pe bi emi ko ti le si lodo yin ni ara sugbon emi nbe lodo yin ni emi mo yo mo si ti esi eto yin ati iduro sisi igbagbo yin ninu Christi You see Paul the apostle did not allow distance to hinder or limit 
his ministry to the people of God. In verse 1, he mentions that he's having great conflict, great agony, great outpouring of heart, and great burden upon his heart in ministering to the people that have not seen his face in the flesh. In verse 5 it says, even though he is absent from the people at Colossae in the flesh, yet in the spirit is with them, in joy is with them. He's looking at their order. He's looking at the organization. He's looking at everything they're doing in the worship. And he's beholding and appreciating and encouraging their steadfastness in the faith. Here, this is similar to Christ's ministry. Because you know, Christ's love for the church made him give himself for the church. And yet, his earthly ministry did not, was not the final thing. His ministry for the church did not terminate with his earthly ministry. Though he is in heaven now, and we are on earth, and we are separated physically by great distance, he still continues to minister to all. Beautiful, because we are told in Hebrews chapter 20, chapter 7, verse 25, that is making intercession for us even now. Let's read verse 1. In John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, you know what he's doing now? He's still preparing a place for us. He's still serving us. In John chapter 16, verse 7, he'll pray the Father. And the Father, because he pleads for us, because he prays for us, because he demands for us, will send the Holy Ghost to all. In John chapter 16, verse 19, and we are told in Mark chapter 16, verses 19 and 20, that the Lord went away to heaven, and yet the disciples went forth. And the Lord was walking with them. And in Revelation chapter 1 verses 18 to 20, we are told that he still holds the candle, the stars in his hand. That is the ministers of the gospel. He's still keeping them, he's supporting them, he's encouraging them and anointing them. He's far away in heaven, where here on earth we seem to be out of sight. And yet he's still ministering to all. Paul's love for the church was not different from Christ's love for the church. He loved the saints of God, even though these saints were out of sight and far away from him. Though he was separated by some distance from churches at Colossae and Laodicea and other places, yet he loved them and he carried on the ministry on their behalf. But Paul the Apostle was not the only one. In the Old Testament were people like Nehemiah and Daniel. That even though they were far away from the people that they loved and the people they would like to minister to, they still had a burden. They still had a concern. They still had intercessory ministry. 
and even teaching ministry, and they had a pleading kind of ministry on behalf of these people that are far away and out of sight. Nehemiah chapter 1 from verse 1. The words of Nehemiah the son of Akaliah. And it came to pass in the month of Chisli, in the twelfth year, as I was in Chusan, the palace. That Ananiah, one of my brethren, came, he, and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews which had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. Ni Anani, Okaninu, Awan, Arakurimi, Owu, Atio Awan, Okurika, Lati Judah, Wasodomi, Moti Biwaleri, Miti, Awan, Ara Judah, Tiosala, Tiokuni, 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 Awan, Ibeko, Ati Miti, Jerusalem. And they said unto me that the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down. And the gates thereof are burnt with fire. What if you me pay away your coup? She have been selling the bed, you know, away the pony, very cool, banning no while land la at your gun. Oh, the Jerusalem was still woolly, as you see, like for a junior. And it came to pass when I had these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. What is the need that you more borrow on you, more joku, what is so by the praying and fasting, he was ready ministry to them and taking their needs and problems to the sight of the Lord. And eventually God used him, he sent him there, he now went to them directly. He was able to minister to them directly. Exactly what Paul the Apostle did. That even though he was far away from Colossae, from chapter 1 we learned he had been praying for them. Hallelujah. And in this chapter 2 verse 1 he said, I had great conflict. For you. And now in writing to them, he was teaching them and counseling them, even though they were out of his sight. If you look at Daniel chapter 9, verses 2 to 4, you will see the same thing. That though Daniel was not at Jerusalem, he was far away in Babylon. Ni Babylon, Lona Jirilowa. Yet he was ministered to them by praying. Si. Not only by praying, by receiving prophecy from the Lord and writing down, preserving it for the edification and the learning of the people of Israel and the whole church. He said, Pay on bad rafu one nitan. Bell long bar, so tell a lot of the Lua Fuan. You can see a costillere, eh? I want your backer. Let's look at Revelation chapter 1. From verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book, and send it. Unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Tatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Oh, we pay a mini alpha to Omega, and in Saju at any Kenyan, 
o si wo ba si ri ton si mi iwe ki o si ran si awon ijo meje si efesu ati si mina ati si pagamo ati si taitaria ati sadi ati philadelphia ati si laodikia even though john was out of sight from these seven churches in asia the lord sent him and he told him your ministry has not terminated to these people even though you are out of sight right unto them and the lord gave him the message he sent the message of correction the message of uh, commendation the message of encouragement the message that will help them to prepare for the coming of the lord he sent it to these seven churches even though these seven churches were out of sight for john the beloved <laughs> When thank God that God has not changed. The same God who allowed Nehemiah to still be ministering to the people at Jerusalem, though distance separated them. That same God who allowed Daniel to be ministering to the people of Jerusalem and the people of Israel, even though distance separated them, that same God is still at work today. He grants me, the pastor and the general superintendent, to still keep on ministering to you, even though distance separates us, you seem to be out of sight, you seem to be far away. Olorun-yi-kan-na-ti-ko-yi-pada-ti-o-je-ki-dan-ye-li-ko-se-ran-se-ran-se-fo-an-we-yato-wa-ni-jerusalem-o-ati-an-we-yi-yi-se-la-k
more than any other thing. And for these Colossians, their hearts had been affected. They wrong interpretation of the people that came to Colossae that was affecting the hearts of the people. The deception and the lies and the misinterpretation had made their hearts to be discouraged and depressed. And there are different things according to the revelation of scripture that happens to the heart when there is false doctrine, when there is misinterpretation, when there is falsehood and lies. Number one, the heart will be discouraged and fainting. The Colossians who have been believing that because we accepted the Lord, we believe in the Lord. Now we are getting ready for heaven. The false teachers came and they said, no, they must worship angels. No, they must go back to the rituals and ceremonies of the Old Testament. The people will now get discouraged as if they had not done the correct thing in the past. These false doctrine will also cause division in their hearts. They will have divided mind or double mind or division because one side they will want to go to the right, on the other hand they will remember the false doctrine and want to go to the left. It brought divided hearts in their midst. Number three, it will bring fear into the heart. Maybe we can we can't continue following Jesus, obeying the New Testament, obeying the Word of God, and maybe even after we die with all this obedience and love and faith, we can still perish and go to hell. False doctrine will bring fear into the heart of the people that have been misled. <laughs> It also brought anxiety over church in the heart, worry in the heart, worrying whether they were right or wrong, worrying whether they were accepted to God or not, worrying whether they'll be able to make it or not. It brought anxiety to them when false doctrine came. It also brought anxiety over church in the heart, and false doctrine, misinterpretation, or even misinformation can bring sorrow in the heart, heaviness in the heart, brokenness in the heart. It can even bring doubting and wanting to backslide. False teachers and false prophets, they aim at the heart of the people to confuse them, to perplex them, and to destroy them, to subvert them, to oppress the weak, weak hearts. And therefore, that is why Paul the Apostle said, The purpose of my ministry is to comfort your troubled heart. Confused, Subverted, oppressed, and weak at heart, the Colossians now needed to be comforted and strengthened in their heart and reassured of the truth they had believed. And these are the things that Paul the Apostle did effectively in this epistle 
by praying for them, by teaching them, by counseling them. Nitori na ti Paul apostle se ninu epistle ni ni pa bi gbadura fun won, ni pa bi gba won ni moran ati ni pa kiko wi sin won. In Colossians chapter 4 verses 7 and 8. Ninu Colosse ori kerin ese ikeji ati ikejo. Colossians chapter 4 verses 7 and 8. Colosse ori kerin ese ikeje ati ikejo. All my state shall strike us, declare unto you who is the beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord, for whom, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know, that he might know your state, your essence, and comfort your heart. Go, go, be in that you for me, me, tiki, ku, yo, je, ki, emma, ara, kun, yo, lu, fe, at, yo, lo, to, en, se, at, ye, le, be, ni, nu, o, lu, wa, en, ni, ti, mo, ti, ran, si, ni, ni, to, ri, e, yi, kan, na, ki, en, yi, kle, ma, bi, at, yi, wa, Obviously, the hearts of these Colossians had been affected by the wrong notion, by the false doctrine that people had brought into their midst. And now Paul the Apostle was sending an epistle. He was even sending other ministers to reassure them, to comfort them, to establish them, and to strengthen them in their heart. And this is our ministry. When we see that false prophets and false teachers are confusing the people of God. They are discouraging and depressing the hearts of the people of God. They are bringing doubt and fear in the hearts of the people of God. And they are making the people of God now to halt between two opinions because of the erroneous things. They are bringing to the midst of the people of God. Then the ministry will comfort and challenge and strengthen and establish the hearts of the people of God. The second Corinthians chapter one. Verses three and four. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort where we is, we ourselves are comforted of God. O lubuku ni oloro ati baba Jesu Christo luwawa baba iyonu ati oloro iti nubogo anything to wa ninu ninu nubogo wa alawa ni pa iti nuna ati afin tu awa ti tarawa ninu na ti odo oloro wa ti awa ti ole ma tu awa ti owa ninu wa ala ki wa ala ninu. What Paul the Apostle is saying is that he went through trouble and persecution and suffering and tribulation. Some false preachers were telling Paul the Apostle that he was laboring in vain because they did not teach them to keep the law of Moses and that all this work will eventually be for nothing. There will be no reward. But then God came to comfort him that he had sent him and he will be with him and they will continue with him, and that God will make him to appear before all the people that he will appear, and his suffering will not be in vain. He was comforted. The same thing that was happening to the people at Colossae. They were telling them, you have believed in vain. If you don't serve angels, if you don't serve uh, this one and that one, if you don't sacrifice, all your believing will be in vain. They too, they were being troubled. That so, believing in Christ, giving ourselves to the Lord, at the last day everything will be in vain. They were troubled in heart. And Paul the Apostle said, Oh, those people have spoken to me before to you. And God came to comfort me. And now he comforted them in all their confusion. Mm-hmm. 
Sugba, Paul Abosin, the Wasa Fe, near that you want to do come with the lady, or Lawrence, you know, or what to Owa, or one more lock and lay, or more lay at the repay, or no round, you send now, you send now, you see the race, Paul Abosin, the Wasa Fan, while I call us a repay, a room that you send us in one year, and when you are one year, one lost a call us and what is so far away, I say, that by just to go in the sun, like boy, one jelly, like saying that I'm going to allow one as a loma jassy, and when you see me, it's that work on. Or can what you bug back? It's only now, Paul wants to say, I want everyone in what you told me. One name that can read. If that wants to tell me what you have that, that you have to knock on me. Or Laurie to know, or look to me, you know, it's only now, you need to look to what you told me, and then I'm doing, you know. Another thing that he had in purpose or had in mind in ministry to them is point three brotherly love within a united church. Oh, Mira, you only knock on, you have to stand a step for one, or not, you fight a step for one, if you are not, you need to look at Colossians chapter two, verse two. So that will call us a rich guess a cage that their hearts might be comforted. Yale to akan wani no we need together united together in law be at so won po ninu ife brothers and sisters there are some things we need to learn about false doctrine ala kunrin ati arabirin o kan wa ti an lati ko nipa ekwe ki false doctrine tends to cause division and selfishness among deceived people awon ekwe ki won ma n fe da iya pa sile such division among the brethren affect various areas of our relationship. These false prophets were coming to Colossae. And the lies they were telling them. The misinterpretation they were giving them. Was bringing division among the people of God. False doctrine always brings division. When somebody comes to you and he gives you false doctrine. It will lessen your love for the people of God. You will want to separate yourself from the people of God. It will lessen your commitment to Christ and to the people of God. The love and respect you add for the one who has been used to bring you to the fullness of the gospel. That love will decrease. Is that not what false doctrine did in the Galatians church? Because Paul went there and gave them the gospel, the full gospel, the true gospel. But some other people now brought the law of Moses to them. And these people now did not have the same love they used to have for Paul the Apostle. They didn't have the love again. And in chapter 4 of Galatians verse 11, it said, I am afraid of you. Let I bestowed upon you labor in vain. Paul said in verse 14, my temptation which was in my flesh, ye despised not nor rejected but you received me as an angel of god even as jesus christ where is then the blessedness you speak of for i bear you record that if it had been possible you would have plucked out your eyes your own eyes and have given them to me in there are your you but now had a little bit more very deeply you back to say a by your doing it that day about you want to work for me am i therefore become your enemy because i tell you the truth in general i do a tiny little bit so the top will be zealously affect you but not well yay they would exclude you that ye might affect them one feet are one years to back is a free it was a false teacher, it was the false prophet and a false doctrine that came to Galatia that made the hearts of these people to be evil affected and to be separated from the minister who brought them to the gospel. False doctrine will affect 
us in various ways, if we accept false doctrine, it will bring a division in our relationship between ministers and members in the church. It will bring division between husband and wife. When somebody gives wrong counseling to a wife, when somebody gives wrong advice to a husband, when somebody teaches something which is not balanced to a family, it will bring division among them. Because doctrine will bring division between parents and children. Between masters and servants. In fact, false doctrine may even produce a divided personality in a single individual. You see, you are an individual by yourself. You are an individual by yourself and you have body, you have soul, you have spirit. All united together, false doctrine can make you neglect your body, can make you neglect your spirit, can make you make a difference between who you really are, tearing you apart and pulling you this way, pulling you that way, that you become almost a mad fellow. But the Holy Spirit ministers through Paul the Apostle that the church will remain united and remain in love. And thank God for a united church. One we have a privilege, the other one we have a responsibility. Number one, you have a privilege to be edified in a loving united church. Number two, you have the responsibility to love and to contribute your part to the church unity in Christ. Paul the Apostle said, The purpose of my ministry is to keep you united together in love. False doctrine is trying to divide you. But my ministry is to unite you in the love of God. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14. Above all these things, put on charity, put on love which is the bond of perfectness. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 2 Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love being of one accord and of one mind. John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Only sound doctrine will keep us together in that love. False doctrine will bring suspicion. False doctrine will be separating us from one another. False doctrine will bring pride. You will think that the false erroneous doctrine, those false teachers are not teaching you, are superior to the basic cardinal doctrines of the Bible you have learned before. It is sound doctrine. The revelation of truth as it is in Christ that will keep us united in love together. By day shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have love, 
one for another. If you no longer have love for one another, false doctrine has come in somewhere. If there is division and suspicion in your heart towards your fellow brother, towards your fellow sister in the church, there is a misinterpretation of the word of God, of the actions of other people somewhere in your heart. Let's continue on if you do not have love for your wife or your husband somebody has taught you false doctrine and you are meditating on something which is bred from the totality of the word of god john chapter 17 verse 21 that they all may be one as thou father art in me and i in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me Nicolossians chapter 2. Paul the apostle also spoke about assurance within the believer through spiritual knowledge. Colossians chapter 2 verse 2. And that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. When false doctrine comes in, your ground under you will be shaky. Uncertainty will come to the heart. Your heart will lack conviction and assurance. This is what was happening to the Colossians. That now they were shaky. They were uncertain about the things they had understood and believed before. And Paul the apostle he had unshakable conviction. He knew the Lord. He had known the Lord. He had met the Lord. He had been to the third heaven. And the Lord was communicating to him and with him the gospel that he that he taught. And he said, These people are shaky and uncertain. Even though they are out of sight, my love for them, my ministry for them will not be diminished. I will write to them, I will pray for them, I will intercede for them, I will counsel them, I will challenge them so that they will have assurance through spiritual knowledge. And as these Colossians were passing through a turbulent period in their Christian in their Christian journey, Paul's ministry was peculiarly suited to bring this assurance through spiritual knowledge unto them. And this knowledge of the mystery of God will usher them into the riches of Christ. The same thing God does for us today. And the Spirit of God takes of the things of Christ and reveals to us and impresses them upon our hearts then we have peace and unshakable assurance. In First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know, what manner of men we were among you for your sake? 
Thessalonica kini ori kini ese e karun bi rere wa ko si wa sodo yin li oro nikan sugbon li agbara pelu ati ninu emi mimo ati ni opolopo igbekele bi eyin ti ma iru eniyan ti awa je laarin yin nitori yin you can see there the association between knowledge and assurance ori bi a se so imo ati dani loju papo ni ignorance brings uncertainty knowledge brings assurance I nima o ma mu idani loju wa sugbon imo o ma mu idani loju wa second timothy chapter 1 verse 12 timothy keji ori kini ese keji la for the which cause i also suffered these things nevertheless i am not ashamed for i know whom i have believed and i'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Nitori di e yi ti e mi se nji ya wwa yi pe lu, si bo ju koti ni, nitori pe e mi ma e ni ti e mi dagbo, o ti da mi lo ju pe on le pa, o un ti mo fi le la wama, si ti di e yi o joni. You can see over there the connection between persuasion and knowledge, that is knowledge and assurance. O le ri a se kwa ki o wa la ri i dani lo ju a ti ima. Yen e pe ki en yon ni i dani lo ju a ti ima re. In 1 John chapter 5. Ni no ju a no ki ni o ri ka ro. Verse 9. E se i ke sa. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he has testified of his son. Di a wa ban da e ri e ni yon. E ri o lor o to bi ju. When God bears witness in your heart, doubt will flee away. When the Holy Spirit witnesses to your heart that you become a child of God, doubt and fainting will go away from your heart. If the false prophets have been visiting you and giving you their literature and giving you all the ideas, and now you are having doubts and depression, and you are not sure of what you believe, when the Holy Spirit will turn on the floodlight of the truth and revelation of Christ in your heart, all the doubt will vanish away. Assurance will come through spiritual knowledge. <laughs> Tonight we have seen the ministry of Paul the Apostle to the saints that are far away and out of sight. And we have seen that ministry benefiting us ourselves even here tonight. Troubled hearts have been comforted by the assuring promises of God. We have been reminded of the necessity of brotherly love in a united church. And the necessity of allowing the Holy Spirit to turn on the revelation of truth in our hearts so we can have unshakable, unmovable assurance in the Lord. Let's rise up now and go to the Lord in prayer. If your heart has been troubled by false prophets, confess it before the Lord and come back to the truth of the word of God. If backsliders have come to deceive you and that they have come to shift you away from the assurance and the confidence you have and the love you have for the people of God in the church, you reject everything those lying backsliders have told you and take the revelation of truth in Christ as revealed to your heart and come to the assuring ground of the promises of God. Consecrate yourself to the Lord and receive the ministry that God has allowed me to have towards you even tonight. Talk fervently to the Lord and may be a better person, a better man, a better woman before you go out of this place tonight. If you call 
upon him. You remove the confusion in your heart. And establish you in the faith more and more. 